before if someone went to tell me that math go and gym and do that i'll be like what do i need it for but basically now that somebody has collected my girlfriend <laughs> i need to even show the guy and there's going to be return back of me and then uh guys so today we'll be talking about lagos city and the powers that be uh but before i do that please welcome to sam pizu television uh please be sure to subscribe to the tv it is very necessary as in that one is very necessary girl. and we need your source we need your opinion your opinion really matters because that is what we need to know that we are doing you are doing well it is important your opinion does matter so talking about lagos and the powers that be the funny thing is most of these things you get to experience them in lagos only the agbiru oppression task force and all I know Lagos is just so wonderful. Uh, when I get back, I'm gonna bring somebody on the show and we'll be talking more. Stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. At Lagos, Lagos, there's no place like Lagos. Lagos, a cool for show. Still on the topic, Lagos and the powers that be. If you are just joining the conversation, don't forget to subscribe at Sam Pizu TV is a YouTube channel. Beside me is Mr. David. Do I welcome to the show, sir? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, good to have you here, honestly. My pleasure it, is all mine. He, he, took, he took us like a lot of tasks to get him. He's a very busy man and... Uh, well, we're, we're doing our bit. Our bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, at least I'm happy you are here now. So, Thank you for having me once again. Mr. David, tell us about yourself. Well, my name is David. I am I'm a social researcher. Okay. Uh, a minister of the gospel. Wait, that, that title is too much. A social, <laughs> a social, the, what do you a call it? A social researcher. Social researcher. So what, 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 what there's, every day there's just new... A lot of things, you know, uh, like if a product wants to come out and okay. they want to know if this more, product more. will fit this environment. Okay. Governments want to do a policy. Okay. They want to find out how to introduce a policy. Okay. They need a social a social scientist wow. who will do conduct a social research to enable them to be able to present it in the most acceptable way or probably in the most productive way. Wow, we are speaking with a government official. That's no, 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 I'm not a government official. <laughs> but um, you speak for them though. I'm not exactly speaking Ever, for in them. a bit, in, in a way, you speak for them. That's what I do at so social can, research. I, I, I so can I'm, challenge I'm like, you I'm with like so many things, I, eh? If, the, if governments consult me, maybe a government agency, okay. consult to find out, okay, we want to launch an idea, a policy or something. The work of a social researcher is to research, hmm. you know, so that you find out what is on ground, what is the psyche of the people, what is the understanding of the people, what is really happening vis a vis mm. this policy you want to introduce how will it impact mm. on the people how will people receive it you know and then how to go about it so that they can it will help them hammer out their idea and policy in such a way that it will be effective but that's on the paper but you know most of the things in this country uh People just do what they want to do. It's when it backfired, they now come back and say, well, we thought this was a good idea. What can we do about it? We say, well, you've already launched it. <laughs> Still on the topic, Lagos in the past, that be. If you're joining the conversation, don't forget to subscribe on Sam Pizzo TV. So today we'll be talking about uh, tax force, uh, agbiros, and all basically it's more of lagos and all the stress people encounter in lagos starting from uh, the drivers even the people who the, is it the commuters is that the word uh basically uh, starting with this tax force what do you think about tax force well uh let me first by, start by saying this is probably my fifth year in lagos okay and um I must say, when I first came in, I experienced what I would call culture shock. Culture shock in the sense that I there are some things that were strange to me. Yeah, it's not what he, you, you know. You, you need to I use. mean, I see people doing going about their legitimate businesses, mm -hmm. and then some people somewhere will just come and demand money from them. So I used to ask, who are what? these people? What is it? For? What is this for? <laughs> I, I I mean, I I didn't understand. Yeah. I 
said, so why didn't you report to the government? Why didn't you report to the police? I they would just look at me like, who is this guy? Is this <laughs> Where are you coming from? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, I mean, it was shocking to me that you are doing legitimate business. You yeah. are working hard. You are doing all you can to earn a living. Somebody somewhere will stand, and especially for the commuters, and demand money. And I ask question, who are these people? What is this money for? And what I hear is that, oh, they are the... Uh, is it the National Union? Yeah, they are the union, they are the... So, and I say, okay, fine. I believe in organization. I believe in unionism, you know, to coordinate the affairs of a people. I say, so what do you get in return from this harassment and payment? And why, instead of them harassing you on the street, why they are not something like a monthly dues? where everybody register and then there's a, there are monthly dues. I think the, to effectively answer that question, you need to look at why task force in the first place. Why were they instituted? Every task force is instituted to answer, to give a quick solution hmm. to an existing problem. They are supposed to be like a hard hoc kind of Are they not police? No, well, when you say task force, they are different group of tax force. Just this main tax force in Lagos states, the ones who are just a bunch of police officers or maybe the, I think most time it's not just police, there's police, there's law, LASMA, I don't know. Well, it, 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 they, are, they are tax force for different uh, uh, reasons. But so, they do the same thing. They come, they pack cars, they come, they pack bikes. Okay, when you're talking about task force that are, that are targeted towards maintaining law and order and order on the road when you say it this way you make it sound simple but <laughs> when you see tax force tax force is just one person it's just these people with white car they have a lorry black lorry and they come when you see so them you know there's problem we need, we need we need to find out were they instituted by the government how do we know if yes why were they instituted and for how long what were they meant to do you see before you solve any problem or answer any, any solve a problem. You need to understand the problem holistically. Mm. Now, I've been accosted, you know, a number of, maybe once I was parked somewhere and I was still in the car, all right? And I was trying to wait for somebody to pull out so that I could come in. And then some guys came in, they said, you're parked on the road. I said, yes, I'm parked on the road waiting for, and you can see my trafficator light on, trying to enter this place, but somebody is pulling out. So, and the person can't just pull out because people are moving. Vehicles are moving, so you know, and all that. And they went on, started speaking. I said, I'm trafficking. I'm in the car, my car is running. I'm not packed. I'm not doing anything. I'm waiting for somebody to come out. But of course, whether they were not informed of what they are supposed to do or they just decide to take law into their hands, I don't know. Why, why are they working? Are they working for, they say they are working for local government, hmm. all right, to check that, to ensure that people are not wrongly packed. But I, I think a lot of time, they have gone beyond that. To me, they are just like a bunch of people that put themselves together to extort money the from, yeah. from, the, uh, from the masses. And they tell you, we are taking you to our, our office, uh, you know, and then you, you start, pay... You start, you, you, most you, people you, start panicking though. And then you pay 50,000 Naira. And they're like, for what offense? So there's a lot of, there's a, there's, there's, there's a lot of gap between government and the masses. You know, there's a there's knowledge gap. It's possible that the government are not even aware of the existence of this. I, I think I think uh, they are aware because most you of know, and if they are aware of the existence, they are not aware of what they are actually carrying out on the field. You know, mm. there is there is a lot of abuse. Are okay? you sure? Are you sure? They are I don't think any there. government. I, I doubt if any government will release people on her city on a citizen to harass them, intimidate them, and make life difficult for them. But these people speak for Lagos State Government because most of the time you see it LASG. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now, they may be speaking for Lagos State Government, but maybe they are not saying what the Lagos State men ask them to say or doing what the Lagos State Government asks them to do. But I believe uh, it's possible that government is set this task force to maintain order to ensure people do not park wrongly. Perhaps they are, over, they are going overboard. It's the responsibility of the masses to express our dissatisfaction and report to the appropriate authority. When two, three, four, five, 10, 15 people begin to complain through different means, government will, it will get to attention of the government and government will like, there will be a restructuring and adjustment and a cautioning of these people, you know, and so the right thing will be done.
I think uh, I, I'm the opinion that they are probably not. They are probably misrepresenting the op the agenda okay. of the government. All right. So there's need for a check. I mean, every government will want there to be order. I mean, if there is order, the people are the beneficiary. We are the, we are the, we are the ones that will benefit from it. Obviously. But of course, there's also the likelihood for an untrained hands to abuse such responsibility, to abuse the right of other citizens by handing such responsibilities to them. So I believe there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And I think uh, the government and the people need to play their part. Thank you very much, sir. I really, I really hope uh, with this, uh, one thing I've just learned, I just got to learn something from you now. We should not grumble, we should speak. Uh, I want to say maybe as it is now, uh, people, you have said it, we should not grumble, we should speak, why take the bull by the horn, I think that's the word, uh, speak to the appropriate channel. So basically, sir, apart from tax force though, uh, what about these people, the ag bureaus, uh, uh, still on the national, you know, I, I don't, I don't want, is it? The National Union, is it only ag bureau that is National uh, Well, Union? I am not a transport uh, uh, I, I know, but you live in Lagos. Yes. And you know, I oh, you have your own car. But most yeah, time, but I still take commercial vehicle from time to time. And most yeah. time, even while you're driving, you engage with them because most time, uh, like these guys, the ones, uh, downfall drivers, those are the most... Uh, really oh, really people. Yeah, because when they see you driving, they be like you are like an enemy to them. Most time, they are not really that nice to the like, you know, them. So, well, well, what do you think about this group? Do you feel? Do you see a Lagos where all this uh, downfall, mole, and all will go, and you know, um, in the nearest future, where you just see you want to enter a bus, maybe or just have is your ticket and she just enters some nice professional people like the way you have in the flights and everybody nice attend to you in the conference of your place and it's not any source, uh, saucy people. Do you see that coming soon in Lagos? Do you see that Lagos? Well, I, I, I will say I can see that. Lagos is one of the most proactive states in Nigeria. Thanks to the governor. All right. Uh, I think successive uh, governors of the, of, of the state have done excellently well. But you see, transportation system in Nigeria, we see have a long way to go. Obviously. And it must be approached. We need professionals, experts to look into it and design something that will work for us. All right? So with the way Lagos state government, with the way Lagos is going, in the next, I don't know how soon it will be. Because it's going to be a change. It's, it's, uh, yeah, you, you need a visionary, a discipline a focus and a consistent leadership to bring uh, any agenda to success in any way, Lagos inclusive. But Lagos, they're already working, all right? So I expect, when we talk about transportation problem, because of population increase, we are not supposed to depend on one means of transportation, not Lagos. Lagos is the, one of the few states in Nigeria but we have the train. that has, but how effective, how yeah. functional are these? I think we need to, uh, government need not do everything. If you go to UK, they are, you see buses, trains, and all that. It's not government running them, private individuals, all right? You know, private government initiative. Yeah. Work together to achieve this. And that's what we need to be doing now in Nigeria, especially in Lagos. Look at the waterway. The waterway has been there for a long time, undeveloped. But thank God now it's been developed. So we need more private people to come in. So government need to uh, design uh, a policy, a, a program that will make an investor to be secure, to be sure that this money I'm investing in this thing will not, I will get my return back, it will be sustained and all that. Not that what this government leaves and then another government comes with a different policy that kills the entire system. And then, so those are, it is the inconsistency of the government that is, that can determine how soon. Like they don't, they don't, soon, they don't have a plan. This government with different agenda, yes. another government with another agenda. You know, but Lagos has been fortunate in the sense that uh, the same political party with the same agenda, you know, has been coming into power. Right, but it doesn't have to be a party thing, it can be a state agenda okay. where everything is uh, you just come and do your beat and, and move. Mm -hmm. So, I foresee a Lagos, it's very possible. 
I foresee a Lagos where, you know, these small lawyers are, uh, are, are out of the way. Already they have been, they have been ex extinct. All right? Are they? Well, they you still go to I, places I, like Oshodi. Very few uh, compared to compared to what you see. You still see the small lawyer. You still see, there's, uh, I think there are three. There's small lawyer. There's LT and there's uh, Danfo. I think Danfo yeah. is a smaller one. Yes. Yeah, Danfo. Uh, but you see, yeah, I've been in Lagos now for the past five years. I think I'm not sure if I've seen one more lawyer. I don't really. Yes, I've been seeing the long buses, the long bus, the red and the, the red and blue and all that. But I've not. Uh, I've been to Oshodi a couple of times. I maybe I've not. Maybe I've not just you, been you, privileged you, or you, fortunate to see them. So I won't deny the fact they don't exist. But not like it used to be before. Things are changing, and we need to acknowledge that, all right? So things are changing, and things can change for the better. Like I said, it depends on the, the drive of the government. Mm. You see, government doesn't need to provide us transportation. They need to create uh, a policy that everybody will work with. People, it's, people find their means of livelihood. It's, it's, a, it's a major part of the economy that drives Lagos State. So how do... Now, if... 100 Molwe guys, a thousand Danfo guys come together to buy a coach. Government sell it to them, they pay for it, and they are paying maybe annual rents on the coach. Mm -hmm. They may not have the money to buy it. The government purchases it through some loans and all that, and these people are paying, you understand? You will not want your coach to, to get bad. So you will maintain it. You know that you are making more money from that than you are making for this. No, I, think, I think that's another new idea. So there's for them. always ways by which the government But why can't can the government bring this one and this idea to them? With the people. Well you really don't know what government are doing. At least let's see what they are doing with the waterways. It seems to be working. It's relatively new. It's too early to judge. Everybody just desire con continuity. Alright? And when everything is functioning it's gonna be good for everybody. Today I have people who are coming from Ikorodu and in less than 20 minutes, they are on island through the waterways. That is fantastic. We need more of that. We should even be able to commute back and forth. A lot of money is required. A lot of regulation is required. A lot of ideas and policies are required. So the government needs to work together. And I think Lagos State have done very well. They are on, you know, they are, they, they've been providing means. They introduced the, uh, the, is it the, the lane for, uh, uh, BRT, the, lane, BRT lane, BRT buses. But is there a need for that? So, so you have an alternative to the uh, Kombi, I mean, the town, Danfo guys and, and the Molwe guys. BRT. If government give them five years and the plan is well drawn out and they are well carried along, mm -hmm. you know what's going to happen? They will be ready in three years. I think the problem that we have with Nigerian uh, system is that we inherited a system of government from the colonial masters. The oh, colonial masters came to the country to benefit, to reap the country, to benefit the crown. So they put, put they don't, in, they don't, they don't, they don't talk to you. You know, they rule over you. That's why they're colonial masters. So when they hand over government to us, independence to us, is that same the system same of governor, governance that we inherited? But if you go to their own country, they do not rule their countries like that. They dare not. Do you understand? So it's always the government of the people for the people by the people. But here it is the government yeah. of, of the, the elect people. or the, the elites against the masses. <laughs> and that's a very good way to explain. You know, and it's not supposed to be like that. I think the earlier we, we, rest, we, we restructure our thinking, you know, that it's like government versus the masses. It ought not to be like that. Government and the masses are supposed to work one, together one, one. to achieve a better society. They will not always agree. All right? They may not always agree. In fact, they will not always agree. But that's where friction are actually very good because with friction, you come to a better, uh, harmonious working relationship. So it's, 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 I think. But I see Lagos. With the way Lagos is going, how soon, I don't know. I'll see. You don't, you don't you know, know what But I see in Lagos. You see a good future for Lagos. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Still on the show, we're still talking about Lagos and the powers to be. Um, still with me is Mr. David. What about these people? I, I don't really know what they do. Neighborhood Watch. 
I, I don't know. I just see them, they ride, they go on bicycle up and down and they just keep going. And I don't just know, are they like another means of government to just empower people that are just jobless? This don't you can see the government is not doing anything, just put some people there and I believe that you know anywhere in the world the most effective way of policing, the most effective security measure anywhere in the world is community policing. Anywhere and everywhere in the world. So hence the neighborhood watch. So I think the idea of neighborhood watch is community policing where you know uh, you break the society into smaller units of to the to the extent of compound or streets mm. where you have people who are policing they know everybody on that street they know who is a stranger they know who is a guest they know who's the guest of who the person is they know what the person is doing so if something happened in that community they have information and data the likely people okay this community never experienced this it was the time so and so received this kind of guest that we have this experience so you know where to take it to you know where to pin it to and you don't necessarily need as it were uh, a uniform people you just need certain people in the society to do that and you may need a you know maybe like in this case uh, a, a neighborhood police you know sometimes you may not know the function somebody is playing until there's a problem okay. and then you know oh okay so this is why this guy's been there you know so far there's not been an issue where I see their work but I believe it's supposed to be a form of uh, community policing to take security issues safety issues down to the community level uh thanks for coming to the show it's a pleasure to have you uh on behalf of sam pizu tv um most time i like to give my guests a thank you for coming gift uh see pizu tv oh, i wow. present you this thank our you. small token of gifts so uh we can oh, thank right. our boss right. for thank that thank you so much San Piso TV, thank you for the management, the board of director of San Piso. I'd like, I'd like to appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's thank a pleasure, you for sir. inviting me over. And thank you for this uh, precious gift you have given me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, sir, for coming. So we've come to the end of the show, but feel free to subscribe and also catch up on all the episodes you've missed. Uh, subscribe on our YouTube channel, San Piso TV. Please stay safe and also keep smiling. I'm your host, Binga Mavic. Bye for now. Peace out.